Hey guys, so today we are going to talk a little bit about a subscriber question. And the question in question is... Frederick, can I use Firebase instead of a real application server? So let's get into it. Now, this is a really good question. And to actually start us off, we need to define first and foremost what is Firebase and what's the difference between Firebase and a real application server. So let's talk about that for a moment. So Firebase is a, a service, just like Amazon's Lambda functions, for example, where you are allowed to host what they call functions in the cloud, cloud functions, if you will. And what, are, what is a cloud function? Well, the best way I can describe it is that if you have ever worked in Node.js, specifically with, say, Express, this will feel very familiar to you. Because in essence, what a Lambda function is, or a cloud function, it's basically just the, uh, def defining a function, a named function, that they will map to a URL for you. And just in, as in Express, it's simply the callback function that will handle the incoming request from the network. That's all it is, in essence. And to, to kind of enhance that, you also have their specific APIs on top. So it's not a complete plug and play replacement of Express, but it's very, very similar. And you have access to different APIs through their SDK, which stands for Standard Development Kit which is just a bunch of methods and APIs that you can use in order to interact with the storage service or the buckets where you store statics files, databases that the, the source of thing, validation, authentication, all these things. And they have SDKs for the various different, you know, the different platforms. If you want to do mobile development, web development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes to answering this specific question, we have to think about something first, because if you've watched any of my old videos, you will probably know what I'm going to say here. Or you may think that you know. So, what's the difference between Firebase then and Express? Well, Firebase allows you to get a quite a lot of things for free. You mean you have validation in place by just default. You have all these very nice integrations to different authentication methods like you know, sign it with Google, Facebook, etc., etc., and you know, of course, you password and username and email, uh, which is the standard approach, right? All these things you pretty much get for free, and then the database is already set up for you, and it actually has quite a nice few, <laughs> quite a suite of nice features that you can use. So it's a very good tool for, to get productive very quickly. But the difference between this and using a standard application server is that you are as you may suspect, limited in what you can do. Because since you're not running, I mean, you don't have access to a file system, for example, in Firebase, you can't store things on the local, local file system because you don't have one. And you're limited in terms of what you can pick for your database. That's another limitation that you have to account for. Now, some of you will say that, or if you have worked with Firebase, that, hey, Frederick, you can just upgrade to the production package or like the paid version of Firebase and then you can use Google Clouds, you know, different containers and connect to that. And you can absolutely do that. I mean, you can extend Firebase and have different storage systems, but I'm just talking from the perspective of somebody who's starting out with it. So there's absolutely nothing stopping you from running a production environment or a production application through Firebase. I've done it myself. I know that it works. But... Is it a good thing to use the use that instead of a, of an application server? It very much depends on you and your needs. If you have, say, a prototype application or a mobile dev, mobile application, or if you have something that is fairly standard, and that's kind of the whole selling point of Firebase and Lambda functions and all that stuff. I mean, most of the time, what you really need is just a function that will run that can connect to a database or a bucket or an authentication flow or something like that and a URL that hits that end, that can hit that endpoint from the network that's you, like that's basically all you need 99% of the time as a as a software developer 
And that's what Google and Amazon and these companies have identified. That's why you have these functions, because it's very cheap for them to run. And it's very convenient for you as well to just run your functions this way. And of course, then you have like, pay, you know, paid pay plans and so forth that are adjusted based on usage, which is also very nice. But the difference here is, as I said, like you, you are very limited in comparison to what you can do with a normal application server. And the second thing is, of course, that if you are a beginner, you should know that it's not the same thing. If you use, if, if you, you become a master of, Amazon, uh, of Firebase, for example, you will not have the knowledge needed in order to work in a co regular company because it's not the same thing. Firebase and Amazon, like these functions, they're fairly new. Like you should know that there is a... The concept is very simple, but it's not something you will find in a regular company. Very, very few companies use these services to run like production-grade software. I mean, it's uh, it's really not the sort of thing that you will find at the major IT companies. It's it's not. So you should carry that with you if you are a beginner. So what I actually said to the specific subscriber in, in response is that if, you have, if you're starting your own startup, or if you want to create your own mobile application, or if you have, you're just getting something off the ground, this is a great way for you to get very quickly up and running because it's very, it takes care of a lot of hassle for you without you having to man manage a bunch of overhead pains that come with traditional application development. So it is a convenience to do this and it is really great. But you should be aware of that it's better for you to start, if you're a beginner, to start by learning how to do traditional application development. Now I'm saying this because that's the foundation. It's easy to understand Firebase if you already know how to say, in this case, you make a real express server and all the considerations you need to do or need to have in order to produce an application, like a production level application in say Node. It doesn't have to be Node, but it's the sim most similar thing, right? So if you know that already, this is a great time saver, but you should not start with this unless you already know how to make a regular one. Because as I said, one is a convenience that is fairly trendy, fairly new, but it's a very it's a subset of what real application development is. Firebase is not the same thing as building your own thing. Definitely not. It is a convenience. So if you want that convenience, make sure that you know your foundation, like your core skills first, because those are the core skills that are going to give you get you a job or get you to allow you to be a professional developer. Firebase will not do that for you. But once you have those skills and you want to create your own company or you want to get something off the ground very quickly, I think it's a great service. I, I, I personally enjoyed working with it quite a bit. Although, as I said, it is limited in comparison to having full access to everything, which is the case when you do traditional application development. So hopefully that answered your question. Have a great day.